Hello, you absolute legends. Exactly two years ago, I made a video on what a perfect Minecraft speedrun might look like. This video was made with the help of the Minecraft speedrunner Curryway, who held the world record at the time, which sat at 14 minutes and 36 seconds. In that video, we came to the conclusion that if everything went right and we got the most ideal luck, then maybe, just maybe, someone could get a time below 10 minutes. And oh, how naive we were. Since that video was made, not only has the 10 minute barrier been broken, but it's been completely destroyed with the world record being halved since that time. Just a few days ago, the speedrunner Xylanox beat Minecraft in the random seed glitchless category in 7 minutes and 45 seconds, beating the existing record by half a minute. This is the greatest Minecraft speedrun of all time, and if you've been following Minecraft speedrunning for a while, you would know how shocking it is that people these days are beating the game this quickly. I'm serious when I say that two years ago, people weren't even sure that anyone would go below 10 minutes. And now, going below 7 or even 6 minutes seems not only possible, but inevitable. I know I've dunked on some of the Minecraft speedrunning rules in the past, but I still absolutely love the game, and I personally find all of the tech that speedrunners use to be extremely fascinating. There is a lot more going on under the surface than what's apparent when you just watch a video, and Minecraft is one of those games that's way more interesting if you know what's going on. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at this new world record and find out why Minecraft speedrunning has gone from 15 minutes just two years ago to 7 minutes today. I really hope you enjoy. But legends, before we get into the run, a big thanks to this video's sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is a web browser built specifically for gamers. PC gaming can be a bit iffy at times, especially for me due to my unfortunate problem. You see, I just can't seem to close tabs. I always seem to have at least 300 open at any one time. They're my babies, I can't abandon them. This leads to all my RAM being used, so games end up slowing down. But with Opera GX, this isn't a problem because I can limit the amount of RAM and CPU the browser uses. Opera GX also has seamless integration with platforms like Twitch, Discord, and Spotify, plus many more, so you can easily keep track of when your followed streamers go live, chat while browsing, and listen to your favorite songs. Now I know what you're thinking, setting up a new browser is annoying and I don't want to ditch my old extensions, but Opera GX allows you to quickly import all of your settings from your normal browser, plus it's even compatible with Google Chrome extensions. And if you use my download link, you get an exclusive feature in your GX corner, which shows all of my latest vids so you don't miss one. True gamers use Opera GX. X, so click the link below and try it for free today. In the earlier days of Minecraft speedrunning, one of the biggest sticking points was having to constantly reset worlds trying to find one that might be a suitable candidate for a speedrun. In fact, much of the time was spent just cycling through new worlds, which was a really tedious process. Then the runner Jojo got the bright idea to run several instances of Minecraft at the same time, which would let players check worlds much quicker. This was first actually implemented by the runner Hamazon, even though it wasn't technically allowed by the official Minecraft rules at the time. However, this was ultimately changed, which eventually led to the insanity that we have today and what's called the Wall. The new world record holder Xylanox was running 15 separate games of Minecraft at the same time, which allows him to check way more worlds and improve the odds of getting a lucky seed. This ends up being super useful, because these days the strategy has been refined to the point where your options are rather limited. A couple of years ago, there were actually quite a few different ways you could set a new world record. For example, you could spawn near a village where you could get food, iron, and maybe obsidian if you were lucky. You could also spawn near an ocean and find a monument for gold, which could be used to trade with piglins. Finding a shipwreck then became super popular, which contained chests housing iron and food. A ruined portal could also be used, and is theoretically the fastest way to enter the nether. I mean, technically you could even have just spawned near a cave and dug down, gathering resources along the way. Nowadays, there's basically only one strategy, one meta that is considered the best, and it's what all of the top players aim to find and that's a spawn next to a buried treasure. Buried treasure contains gold, iron, diamonds, food, and TNT, which are all incredibly useful. Normally you need to get a map from a shipwreck to find one, but players can pinpoint a chest location just using the F3 screen. And it's this idea of using the F3 screen to find things that's changed the game more than anything. 
Mind you, using the data on screen to locate structures isn't trivial. I can assure you that if you loaded up a game of Minecraft, pressed F3, and tried to find a buried treasure, you couldn't do it. There's a reason why these types of strategies took years to eventuate. They are super technical and require a ton of research and trial and error to work out. Players need to do very specific movements and decipher particular numbers on screen to deduce where the chest is. It's very difficult to do quickly, and they make it look way easier than it is. Xylanox gets to the chest in around 15 seconds, and finds plenty of iron, gold, food, and some TNT. The TNT is super valuable because it allows you to quickly get not only wood from trees, but also blocks in the form of dirt. As time progressed, runners realized more and more that having a large amount of blocks is one of the most important aspects in the game. Having the ability to place blocks whenever you want ends up saving time everywhere. After collecting wood and blocks, Xylanox has everything he needs before entering the nether, so he enters the ocean in search of a lava ravine. Years ago, the most popular way runners would create a portal was by using a lava pit, either above ground or at the base of a cave. These days, it's mostly done using lava Lava ravines at the base of oceans. Doors are used to prevent the flow of water, otherwise this just wouldn't be possible. Xylanox enters the nether in 1 minute and 8 seconds, which basically puts it as one of the best, if not the best, nether enter of all time. Now, those knowledgeable in Minecraft might point out that you can surely enter the nether way faster using a ruined portal. And that's true. The world record for entering the nether is actually just 7 seconds, a full minute faster. But the problem is that you would be entering without iron, without food, without blocks, without anything. What makes Xylanox's run the best is that he enters very fast, but also with iron tools, with food, and with plenty of blocks. This ends up saving all of the lost time back and more throughout the run. Naturally, upon entering the nether, there is a bastion and a fortress nearby and right next to each other. Bastion meta has basically been solved for a while now. There are four different types of bastions, each with their own strategies. Players identify the type of bastion and then know exactly what they're going to do. Xylanox breaks a chest to lure as many piglins as possible, then runs inside the bastion and digs in a particular way to trap the piglins, while he mines gold and throws it to them. Here, he still does need to be lucky with trades, which of course he does. He needs a total of 20 obsidian to make two more nether portals, at least 12 pearls plus a few extra for travel, enough string to make wool for beds for the end fight, crying obsidian or extra obsidian for the end fight as well, and fire resistance potions for the rest of the nether. And he gets all of these extremely quickly. The next small section is all skill, and it's legitimately insane. First, he runs up some stairs, digs through this wall, and mines several blocks to end up on the other side of the bastion with a direct line to the fortress. This doesn't seem like much, but not many people would do this, and it shows the level of awareness that Xylanox has. Most people would have gone back out the front and gone around, but earlier in the run, even before entering the bastion, he was already thinking ahead about the routing and the optimal path he could take after trading with piglins. Then he uses a pearl to quickly get to the top of the fortress to a spawner, and I can't emphasize enough how insane this pearl throw is. The top of the fortress tower protrudes outwards and is fenced off at the top, so if you hit the fence and fall down, you're screwed. But just underneath is a small ledge, which he perfectly hits. And what you have to understand is that in order to make this throw, you have to gauge the height perfectly, jump, and throw on the correct frame while jumping to make this height, which he does instantly with no setup. When it comes to blaze spawners, the strategy has been pretty standard for a while now. Normally, people mine blocks around the spawner, which increases the chances of more blazes spawning. But because he has spare TNT, Xylanox uses it to do the job quicker. This fight doesn't go as smooth as possible, and he even loses one blaze rod that falls into the lava below. While waiting for blazes to spawn, he builds a nether portal to enter the overworld. And what follows is also a strategy that only became popular in the last two years. The only purpose here is to use Eyes of Ender to locate the position of the stronghold. Of course, back in the day, finding a stronghold was a massive challenge and required a lot of skill and luck. But these days, using a calculator, players are told exactly where it is and where they need to build the final nether portal. With the stronghold position ascertained, he heads back to the nether to get the final blaze rods that he'll need to create Eyes of Ender for the end portal. Before finishing this section, he does a really cool technique which is called Pearl Hanging. Pearl Hanging has been known about for a while, but again, within the last couple of years, has become more and more implemented. First, he throws a pearl in the direction he needs to travel. Then, while the pearl is in mid-air, he changes the rendering 
expand the distance down to two chunks. This unloads the pearl, leaving it suspended indefinitely until it's loaded again. Once six blaze rods have been collected, he increases the render distance again, which loads the pearl, allowing it to continue on its path. Now it just so happens that the coordinate Xylanox needs to build the nether portal to get into the stronghold is in the middle of a lava sea. But this isn't a problem because he got fire resistance potions from piglins which lets him swim in lava. And building portals in lava is something speedrunners prepare for and practice specifically. Because of the accuracy of the stronghold calculator, it's basically a guarantee you'll end up directly inside the stronghold, which is one of the bigger reasons Minecraft speedruns are now so much faster. Once inside the stronghold, the hunt for the end portal begins. Historically, finding the end portal room was a make or break endeavor. Sometimes it took minutes to find, which ended many runs. The stronghold is a maze with many different paths, so it used to require a decent amount of luck to find the end quickly. But after years of research, a way was discovered to locate the direction of the end portal room, again using the F3 screen. While it still requires some luck when it comes to pathfinding, the chance of finding the end quickly is far greater than it used to be. Xylanox at least knows which direction to head, and after some very minor backtracking, he finds the portal. Xylanox enters the end at 6 minutes and 14 seconds, which is the fastest anyone has ever been at this point. Before this run, a couple of people had entered at around 6.30, but both of those runs ended in disaster. For example, late last year, Feinberg entered at 6.35, but that run perfectly demonstrates that even this close to the finish, the run is far from over, as he had to wait a full 5 minutes for the dragon to perch. Xylanox needs the dragon to perch quickly, which is admittedly uncommon. Thankfully he is so fast that he still has a decent buffer on the world record, which was 8.15, allowing him a full 2 minutes. The average end is around 2 to 2.5 two minutes, so he still does need some luck, but it's not a crazy amount. Ultimately the dragon did perch quickly, allowing him to complete the end in around 1.5 minutes. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, bitch! This new world record by Xylanox is nothing short of incredible. Sure, players need a lot of luck, but this kind of luck is honestly not that rare, especially these days with all of the new techniques and tools players are using. What truly sets a run like this apart from the rest is the quality of the decision making and the mechanics. You could give everyone in the world the seed and probably only a handful of people would even have a chance of playing it this well. As someone who has followed Minecraft speedrunning for a few years now, it's really something to see the record this low. And perhaps what's even more shocking is that there still seems to be a lot of room for improvement. The end fight itself could have been at least 30 seconds faster just from better luck, and maybe even faster than that by using a more modern strategy like Zero Cycle, which involves building up into the sky and defeating the dragon before it even has a chance to perch. It seems like the overall meta is becoming pretty solidified at this point, with very specific strategies now being targeted. I think as time goes on, the game will become more and more solved. Within the next couple of years, it wouldn't surprise me to see the world record go below 7 minutes, and maybe even below 6, which would be truly incredible. If you want to see the full run, I'll put a link in the description. Go check it out and give Xylanox your congrats and a follow. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.